Here at Demo4, we will use a data class to mock real data retrieved from a repository. So we will provide a list of 200 person objects through an array list to our lazy column. Then our lazy column will reflect that data with dynamic text and images fed through the network using COIL library for Jetpack Compose. We will first define a data class for the person. But before we do so, I need to mention that every person will belong to some section. We want this so that later, at demo 5, we can display sticky headers of sections to our persons. So let's define our person data class. For simplicity's sake, we will define it at the same file as the rest of the code. So, data class person. Every person will have an ID. Also, every person, as I said, will have a section, which will also be of type int. We'll have a name, and we'll also have an image URL. We will make 200 object instances of that data class to mock real data retrieved from a repository. So let's first define a person's array list. Then let's define our first section. It will be number one. Now we will store 200 instances of person class into our person's array list. OK. So what did we do here? So in this code, for persons 1 to 14 will belong to section 1. Persons 15 to 29 will belong to section 2. Persons 30 to 44 to section 3, and so on. So we will use that to group our persons for demo 5. To display our images from the network, we will use the COIL library for Jetpack Compose. But before we do so, let's declare it at our up-level Gradle file on the dependencies. And sync. Now let's define the image loader that will display network images for our lazy column. For that, we will need to define a new composable function. Let's call it image loader. It will take an image URL as an input. And we will emit an image, which we also have to import. Now, for the image not to display an error, we need to define a painter and a content description. The painter will come from Coil's Remember Image Painter. And it will take an image URL string as an input. Then. We will define our content description to be null. And as you can see, now the error is gone on the image. Additionally, we will set a content scale to be content scale crop. 
so it fits better and we will have a modifier to change the size of our image to 120 dp and we need to import the size as well and we are done so what did we just do here we created a function that holds an image much like with a binding adapter if you were using xml layouts with data binding here we create a function that takes a url as a string parameter and uses coils remember image painter method for jetpack compose to asynchronously download the image from the network and display it cropped and at 120 by 120 dp size so here comes the time to create the composable function that represents a single list item inside our lazy column. You can think of it as the XML layout for the list item together with the view holder and its binding, but in a much more concise way. Let's create the composable function to represent the list item. No surprise here, the function name will be list item. And because list item represents a single row of data, it represents a single person. Thus, it will need to take a person as a parameter to display its contents. The list item's contents will be held inside the card, which is a nice material UI component. In this card, we will have a row. A row is the equivalent of a linear layout whose items are horizontally aligned. So we can use it in order to display on the left the person's image and then on the right the person's details. So let's do just that. Let's utilize the image loader we built earlier and display our image. So for that we will call our image loader and we will pass the person's URL image URL as a parameter and that's it now let's add a spacer to add a little bit of width between the image and the text that will follow and it will have a modifier of width let's say 8 dp and finally let's add our text on the right and for our text, it will have a text of, let's say, the person's name followed by the person's ID. And now let's put some style to be of material, theme, typography, let's say H5. And finally, add a modifier to add a little bit of extra padding all around of another 8 dp. And that's our list item when it comes to the row. However, we need the card to also get a little bit of spacing and to be clickable. So let's add some modifier to our card. So for our card, we will define a new modifier that will define a padding of, let's say, 8 dp or around it. And it will fill max width to occupy the entire available space horizontally. And we will make it finally clickable and um, and let's additionally give it some elevation of let's say 8 dp now to make this clickable we need to return something so what should we return we should return the person so if we click on that list item we return the person that this list item represents so we need a lambda here for our selected person to be of type person and return a unit.
And finally, here we will utilize these to return it. So here we will return through the selected person, our person. And here it is. And that's it. What we just did, the list item method takes a person instance, so it can display information about that person and the lambda, which is used to pass that person back to the caller when we click on that list item. We use a card that is slightly elevated, utilizing the material design principles with 8 dp padding between each different card. In that card, we define a row that is like a linear layout with its item horizontally aligned, so we place on the left the person image and on the right the person's name. We use a spacer between the image and the name to add 8 dp of space between the two horizontally aligned elements. Now it is a time to put everything together by modifying our main composable function to host all the functionalities we introduced in our new composable functions. And our main composable function is a lazy column clickable demo. And it is our main composable function because it is defined here inside the set content block. If you remember, in this function, we define a lazy column that performs a fixed functionality 200 times. We don't need that anymore because we're going to pass a list of persons and we're going to have a more dynamic functionality now. But in order to pass a list of persons to our lazy column, our lazy column clickable demo needs to receive that list first. So let's do it here and define a persons list. Now for our items, instead of performing a fixed functionality for let's say 200 times, it will receive the list of persons and iterate through it. Let's import it. So what's changed here? Here we will receive a list of persons and for each iteration of the persons, we will perform something here. And what this is, we will call our list item that we define and we will populate a row of data. So let's do that here. Now, the list item receives two parameters. The first is a person instance and the second is a lambda. Well, the person instance is our current iteration. So since we have our items, persons here, our person will be it. And as for our lambda, a selected person to match the other signature needs to be a person instead of an int, as we will return to the color back a person. So now we can use the same thing. Now we need to change the code here. So in our lazy column clickable demo, we pass the list of persons that we have created here as a parameter because as you see it's now required since we declared it here so here we define the persons for that error to go away but now the it represents a person so we cannot just write person it we will write person and here it will be an it dot name and let's also, since he will have a name, we'll just display the name and it's a number. So let's do it like that. And now let's run this code, see what happens. And we have a crash. The reason? We need to declare internet permissions in our manifest in order to display images with coil. So let's add the internet permission and test again. And here it is. Clickable 
and dynamic.